When that guy went lie to me one minute to your own, I can't even explain the feeling. That... So as long as I leave here, I've just about oh, five past man. three, I'm out of here. <laughs> right, go on, say. Could you actually believe from the Easter Road when it first started that this would be happening? So I was playing for Swindon in the playoff semi-final at Brentford, right? And two years later, I was playing for Peterhead part-time. So League One, League One semi-final to try and get in the championship in England. Two years later, a year at Portsmouth, a year at Dundee. Two years later, I'm playing for Peterhead part-time. Delivering kitchens for 250 quid a week. And uh, I remember at the end of, the, I was coming to the end of my Dundee contract and my dad, me and my dad nearly had a, were nearly rolling about Tesco again. My dad was at me, I didn't like the person you've became. I think you're overweight. I think you're lazy. So how did that, say? how did that go for that though? My second kid had just been born, never slept at a wink mate, he did never slept there. So I'd be up all night, and then I'd travel through to Dundee, on the way through to Dundee mate, I'd get about two bacon rolls in the garage, drive through to Dundee, eat a lot of shit on the way back, and then it would just continue like that. And uh, Dundee came as offered to pay up, took it, thinking I'll get another club mate, nobody wanted this. When I first came up here mate, I, I thought, 27, I'll play in the SPL till I'm 35. I'll be able to get a nice house, yeah. make a few quid, and then I'll get a job after it. Within a year, mate, nobody wants you. No money. Kevin McBride says to me, I've got a job delivering kitchens for you. 
turning 50 quid a week, try and get a part-time team, and all right, it's no great, but you've got your pay up for Dundee, just live off that. Me and my missus going through a terrible time. I'll never forget this. I've never told anyone the story that um, we used to get the, I used to get my 250 quid, right? So my money for Peter Head would pay for my bills, motor, stuff like that. The 250 quid that I'd get for my job, I'd put it in a drawer and that was our money for the week. And I never even knew this, mate, but it was only like a couple of weeks ago Steph, used to, Steph says to me that, she says, I used to come in every day and check that money. And, I, and if I'd spent 20 quid on Pitley, like, what, what have you spent 20 quid on? And I mean, I'm not like that, eh? And I can't even remember being like that. But Steph's like, you were gone at that time. I thought, like, you must have been yeah. worrying so much, yeah? It's, I mean, it's the two kids thing, isn't it, in the house? And you just think, where's my life going, mate? I can't I can play part-time and deliver kitchens till I'm 50, man. Because I'm not going to be able to live. I'm not going to bring these kids up on that sort of money. So head was all over the place, mate. And then I, got, I left the kitchen job. I got a job in the Royal Mail. Night shift, I've told that we moved house and I got a job in there. And I remember, mate, I used to walk down to the Springburn for steps at 11 o'clock at night. And I, the, for that full hour, mate, my, I was like, what has happened to me, man? Long term, what am I doing, man? I've got a three year old and a, a five year old in the house. I'm fucked. I've fucked it for everyone. Steph, mate, Steph wasn't working either. So I had one wage coming in the house and it was like, what am I going to do? So finished the kitchen job early that day, mate, right? And I'm, she's like, can you take the kids to the soft play? I've had them all day while you've been wanting. Can you take them to the soft play and steps, mate? And I, I, honestly, I was sitting like that, thinking the soft play. My phone rang, I answered that my mate who I'd known, I know, just met him a few times here and there. And he's like, what are you doing with your life? Like, what are you working as? And I was like, ah, Delvin Kitchens, hate it. He's like, I've got an idea about starting this podcast up and honestly mate never ever heard that podcast You'd be, no I didn't really know never, podcast, I was like what no. the fuck's a podcast man he's like it's, I think it's going to be big in the next coming years it'll be like online people can can listen to it for free there's nothing else that I've got this idea of interviewing football players talking about football the inside of the dressing room nobody's ever done it I don't know why I think you'd be perfect because mate see that time I was writing all the shite on Twitter People yeah. found it quite funny, so he'd get quite a lot of retweets and likes and stuff like that. So he's obviously seen my Twitter and thought, you'll be good for us. So he said, would you, would you come and meet us in the Blythe Suit in Glasgow? Mate, I had to take a half day from my kitchen job and Steph was raging again. She's like, ah, you can't have, that's half the money. What, what are you going to, do what? Podcast? And I'm like, ah, listen, I can't keep doing this job for the rest of my life. I'm going to need to take a wee chance here. And we sat down and he says, right, we'll interview football players. You'll do it. And I was like, I've never fucking interviewed anybody in my, in my life. So I actually went like that to Kevin Thompson saying, mate, I've started this, I'm, I'm going to maybe start this thing with interviewing players. And he's like, his first words, Tom was a brilliant guy, man. He pure lifts you, do you know what I mean? He's like, you'll be brilliant at that. And I was like, do you think? And he's like, mate, see when we were at Dundee, you sat next to me in the dressing room and for the first minute I got into the last minute, I'd leave, all you done was ask me questions. He says, but I enjoyed it. I liked the way you were intrigued about my career and you'd ask the right questions. So I was like, right, would you let me interview then? So he was the first, he's like, 100% great guy, man. So. Can the producer, my mate, sent us the questions through, and I just had a look at them, maybe changed a few wee things here and there. I know this about Tom, so I'll stick that in. A wee joke, maybe, about that, that we had at Dundee together. And then we drove, he's like, right, Easter Road tomorrow. So, driving through for Glasgow, mate, my heart was fucking pounding, man. I was just sitting, I was like that with the questions, man. Starting off where you were at Hibs, because when it was you, Bruni and Gaz and Deeks and stuff like that, I mean, you looked to me like you were just having, you loved football, do you know what <laughs> I mean? Does, right. When you played, you looked like they, they really enjoy playing football, you know, but isn't it? You see young players now and it's like, pff, you didn't see anyone playing with a smile on their face anymore. I mean, you said they stupid haircuts and stuff. Like you are now. <laughs> I'm still trying to win that bad <laughs> Barnet competition for 1999. Um, but do you know what I mean? You just looked like you really, you just loved playing. I, th I, th I think. The environment that we were brought up in was unique in the fact that there were so many of us that broke through at the same time. We were all pals. Um, a few of us, obviously, boyhood had supporters of the club, mm -hmm. and um, it was almost like a fairy tale as such. Mate, he was a perfect first guest because he's insightful, a wee bit funny, but you can also, he helps you, mate. Maybe yeah. if he sees you're struggling, he'll make his question a wee bit, answer it a wee bit longer, so you've got a bit more time to ask your questions. So. But did you know it was going well, though? No, I didn't. I had no idea it was going well. Keith Jackson's headline that I would walk along the eh, M8 broken glass or whatever uh -huh. it was and I can't even say that now uh -huh. I, 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 uh -huh. you can that I can uh -huh. that but um, it's sad that that was then coming back here three weeks later and getting booed by the whole stadium uh -huh. 
I had a relationship with Keith that people have with the media where he could text you and say, I need a few words for the moron, mate, and you text him back saying, I ain't bother, and you didn't care what's going on. Uh -huh. And that was a bit like <clears throat> the, the stories that used to happen, so. And then we finished the interview, we walked down, got in the motor, and obviously the guy that we were doing it with went like, that was brilliant, man. And I was like, do you think? And he's like, I never heard like, a football player speak like that in an interview. I think he was talking about John Collins, the way he was with John Collins, and he's like, nobody would ever, ever talk about that in an interview. My relationship with him, I felt changed in the respect that he thought I was the brains behind the operation, and he thought Scotty was I led by me. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, I think just thought my mates, I was like, Charlie McGrew, Aidan, Darno Day, Charlie Adam. Right, big man, thanks very much for, for joining us. Pleasure. You're looking well. Good to be here. Like the barn that slipped. <laughs> ready for summer, aren't you? Seven Never mind that. this relegation battle, mate. You're ready for summer, I can tell. And then again, the guy that I don't know, it was like, ah, mate, Charlie McGrew is usually the worst. Thing. Charlie will hate me saying this now. I don't know if you He's like, ah, when we're going down to Charlie, they were a bit worried about Charlie being on the list. Like, ah, Charlie in press comments and interviews is wooden. He, he, he's no great. This must have been when he was at, obviously been at Celtic, so he's maybe a wee bit more hidden from the media and didn't want to get too much out. You wouldn't see when you're especially at Celtic and that, and you're in front of the cameras, you're, every word's hung on it. It's a headline, every word. Yeah. But see, when, that's what, that was probably the first interview where, and it, when I get back to it, what I've done with you, where I felt relaxed and I properly went for it. There'd be odd, there'd be odd times in the odd, maybe, um, press conference or whatever, or at Celtic, where you would, your true self would come out, but then you would rein it back in because you've got. Ian Jameson, or you've got Rona staring right at you, no one a headline to come. Whereas with you, it was just kind of chilled, telling the stories, and then see after when you realise there's nothing really comes at you, think you gain a wee bit of confidence. You go, oh, well, it's alright to be like you can be yourself. And as time went, the more time I was on here, the more you just chill. What's the worst that can come at Really, do you know what I mean? It's like you just got to be yourself. And think people can see that, can't they? I know that. I remember that around about the time you'd asked me, you'd asked me a favour before I can't remember what it was. So I remember thinking, fucking hell, is he at it here or is he wanting something else? I couldn't work out what it was. We went down there, mate, and he was brilliant. And again, we got on the way back, they were like, ah, this is, this is going to work, man. I think this is going to be big. And then we went to Aidan's house. Just sitting in Aidan's house, mate, with our socks, uh, shoes off, sitting with our socks on. And again, me and Aidan chat, chat, uh, chatted. And uh, me and Aidan went out after it. He's like, do you fancy a few beers? Went to Glatton, and Aidan's like, ah, mate, that, that, this is going to be brilliant, man. He's like, even just then, he's like, I found myself saying things that I would never normally say. You just kind of get lost, and it's a conversation, so. Obviously, me, myself and Strachan, you know, probably a bit of clash of personalities, I think. The older I got, the more, the more I was probably becoming, having a bigger role in the team. Well, there was obviously quite a few things happened between us, but. I'd say probably a clash of personalities, but obviously there was a couple of things that, that happened that I probably can't let go, mm -hmm. you know, because I felt, I, I felt he singled me out a lot of the time right. for, you know, un unfair criticism and things like that. But When I heard them kind of three saying how good they thought it would be, that was when I started to think, fuck, we could taste something here. experience was unbelievable, yeah. the whole build up. Do you know what will live with me forever, man? When we walked into the hydro and we walked on to the empty stage and crowd for the first time, like looking, looking at that full arena was that mental, me. wasn't it? That relaxed me when we done that wee bit. It's what, did you think it was? But I, I, I'm the same last year when I went up, I didn't think it looks that big. No, but when it was empty and you're there and you can see when we were doing the, the, the rehearsal thing yeah. and we're shouting and screaming and the fucking microphone shite, you see how high that is. How good was how good was before the rehearsals? Well, I'll just that's the best that microphone. Bit. Aye. Aye. But we, we, we actually did feel quite relaxed, what, a bit more relaxed when we were doing the fucking about on the stage before the rehearsal. But mind what we had to go back in and speak to the production manager, Spike, after they'd been in the crowd listening to us on the stage. That's when I, think, I feel everything changed, though. Aye, because aye. We were so, That's when the nerves proper we kicked so, in. We so, so relaxed, Simon, mean, no, don't we? So, don't apologise. <laughs> 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 we, we, so we were so relaxed, and actually, it was unbelievable seeing, you, seeing us up there and actually being embraced. I know there was nobody there, but just being on the stage and how relaxed and how, how chilled we all were. I, 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 that's the first time I got proper nervous because... Oh, it was Spike? Aye. It was Spike because... Was we were on the stage farting about 
and then just thinking, we're going to rock up, rock up, go out, I'm going to tell a story, Sai's going to tell a story, you're going to tell a story, tell, this has got to happen, that's got to happen, Toby's coming on, bang, job done, let's go have a party. And then he started going through every individual detail. Fucking Andy's sitting in the corner, is writing in a fucking encyclopedia. Yeah. As you know, my head was gone at this point. My yeah. head was gone. Great. And do you know? But at this point, like my head had gone fully gone for that production meeting do you because know what? sorry, Andy. It's like we, we, what we what we do. It's a show, but it's no theatre. Like it's not a script. Do you know what I mean? And obviously, I, I understand that they need a sort of. A, a little bit of a cue to know when to play the videos but it started playing in your mind where they wanted us to say this exact line for them to know when to cue and at this point I was like fuck they get, that guy had done like a, a, a VT for a, a what was it like a cancer thing or a heart thing the week before with doctors and then we were like right so the picture is that Kev's scratching his ass and he's like that. Aye, aye. last week I was doing a <laughs> and now I'm putting a picture of this guy scratching his ass okay next and I was like this guy hates us man and then we went back out on at the stage for a full run. Oh. I was shattered after that meeting with him, and then it's out on the stage. Oh, is it sure to kill? Yeah. No, 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 the queues. Yeah. 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 So, when did the meltdown start for us? Andy, yeah. especially, I want to know. Oh, mine was after I told my story. That was a proper meltdown. After I tried to tell my story in the rehearsal, I was gone. Gone. JJ asked me, no, I never. I fucked that. I skipped all the way there. And what we actually, was there a thought of, I can't do this? Because I'm sure you said that to me. Or it, not, it, but I moved my it wasn't, like, it wasn't like, a, I can't do this. It was like, for, for, for feeling so fine and relaxed about it all, as soon as the, like, the auto cues and a bit more, being a little bit more scripted, my head was just muddled. And I was actually thinking to myself, all the preparation, I didn't try to tell stories and, and obviously just try to go on with the show. It's gone. It's just gone now. It's I gone in my head. Remember, he kept shouting something about that. What was that again? Kept on the phone, he's mad, didn't he? No, I kept <laughs> just shouting. He, shout he kept saying, he kept saying, shut these fucking Somebody all cues up. Somebody getting jelly on the phone. Remember, no, fuck, this is not us. Aye. All cues, that's not us. We're not scripted. We're not scripted. I think he kept shouting that. Where's Mertz? He kept shouting that. Where's Mertz? My meltdown was, it was about 7 o'clock. No, it was about 17 years ago. 17. Because I'm sure Paul Cadda started listening to the podcast and he's like, ah, mate, why have you not asked Lenny, man? He'd be uh, perfect for us. And I was like, ah, fuck. I was on the brew, job centre. I was still doing a bit of work to say, get a bit of cash and I that. I mean, back then I went to, I was helping my mate um, deliver parcels, right? So every day we used to go to Lanark, but there was a, a forest there with caravans. So I used to sit and drop me off there. You deliver the parcels and I'll meet you back. So I just used to sit, love the nature, sat there, chilled out. Always prayed that people come into caravans, just... Just to talk to you, somebody, you know what I mean? Feel good. Um, and then the message came through for Sai saying, Do you want to come on the podcast? Was it the podcast you said? Can you remember? I can't remember what I said, mate. But so, do you want to come on and probably up and go or something? Huh? So my mates came back and picked us up, and I was doing a party in his van, going home, gone wild. So, you were big at it, mate. Sai Ferry mates was massive at the time. So after that, I go, and the next four days, I get a sunbed every single day. Every fucking day, and get a haircut. <laughs> but then when I turned up, um, I remember we went in the wee room and I'm like, oh, there's no cameras here. This can't be right. I didn't know the setup, so when I, the news work, I think you were talking about something, so I went and got the coffees and I'm, I remember shouting here. He's want a coffee, huh? But then you're like, I'm doing absolutely brilliant here. They made a great start, they made a real great start, but unlucky for them, that will be all it was because you can't lose. Any team will struggle losing the best players, but these play, these teams having to get yeah, the, the size of the squad. Yeah, good point, so though. thanks very much, guys. I thought I was brilliant again there. What, <laughs> what a start I've made in this show. I'm sure I remember I phoned somebody after that night, the night of the podcast. I was so unsure and I, I hit the fear a wee bit because I was like, I don't know if I've come across terrible there because it was like sort of serious, no serious, but it was like fat chat chatting stuff and I kept coming up with the most stupid things. So I don't know if it was because I was nervous one of the greatest managers of all time. Aye, one of the greatest the managers of all time. <laughs> <laughs> I believe so, listen, we all I, agree. I think he's one of the greatest managers of all time and I don't really want to get into it because you asked Sai the question, so Sai, on you go. I genuinely remember me the early doors when some of the things that you were saying and I was fucking in stitches. I was wild though, wasn't it? The, the... But just, be that was a note, just, just before we end here, Stanley was the man, I was there for a week, I woke up at half three every morning because of him. And he was watching the Discovery Channel, <laughs> Sharks, right? He's watching Sharks, the Discovery Channel, this guy. Now, this is what I'm up against. And I'm, I'm getting right pissed off now because of this. And he's sitting there. And I wake up and I'm saying, Stanley, what's going on? And he turned around to me and said, Sh -sh -sh Sharks. He said, Sharks. And what about them? He was like, watch this. Honest to God, Stanley 
is one of the worst humans I've ever. Lovely big boy. I'll never speak to the man again. Well, the, the next one straight away. Next next appearance was with his big mate. Okay, that's right. You know what? Actually, at that time, I'd saw that Simon was doing all these interviews, and I thought I could do with him fucking interviewing me. Weirdly, that's how I thought because I thought the only way you get yourself back in the the game. Is by getting a bit of publicity, and obviously Simon was doing the interviews, and then it was. Did you watch him? Sorry, Ken. Aye, I know I did. Aye, because uh, they were the big thing. Yeah. Well, they still are, but they were a big, big thing back then because it was a, it was a new thing. But I remember I was working up in the Shetland Islands, doing fucking eighteen days on, twelve hour shifts every fucking day. Like life was life was pretty shit. And then uh, saw Simon at the. I took my kids to a Clyde training camp, and then Simon was there. And I don't you think were going through the pat lunches, didn't you? <laughs> aye. And then obviously, the next day on Facebook, I had, a, I, I had a <laughs> Facebook message. I think it was a Facebook message saying, hey, we're doing interviews, man, to man, would you want to come on? I said, oh, I'd love to come on. And then rocked up to Hamden that day, and I think Archie Knox was on after me. So he was. Uh, and then just did the interview, and I always just thought, like, this will be quite good, because I, I don't know how to filter things. I just like to tell it how it is and just told the story. And But see, growing up, were you always that big guy that played up No, I was school? actually quite a big, uh, what, they, what would they call it? A big streak of piss. <laughs> The best story I told was the, the three, I've got a three words for you. Brilliant. Stevie Cockwell, he was saying, right, see this weekend, I've only got three words to say to you. Grind this one out. <laughs> and I'm like, that's four, that's four <laughs> words. And it just got to a point <laughs> where it became a rabbit. It was a shambles and obviously they ended up losing their job. And I always found in the media, especially in Scot Scottish media, they're very, very quick to, to make an arse of you. Like I'd been on front page of the paper for, I mean, I've been a gambler. That was the first one. The headline was, I blow seven K a week on gambling. Didn't it happen because I've never earned, I wasn't earning that kind of wages. Um, and then another time I was front page of the paper for getting a fucking job. That job that I had up in the Shetland Islands from 10 grand a week. So there's this is the next headline from 10 grand a week footballer to 800 quid a week or 800 quid every month, whatever it was, or whatever fortnight. And, I was like, fucking hell, I was, so I used to feel like I was doing something wrong, that I was wrong, wrong, that I was put on the front page of the paper, and I thought, these people don't know, don't know me, and I think when I did my interview with Simon, people actually then thought, fucking hell, the big man's just actually all right, and normal, normal, can relate, relatable. Do you see, but when obviously that came out of the paper, and you're working in the, wherever you're working again? On the the shit lines, aye. Was that, was that really tough for you? I was going away, like, meeting up with people, Gone away for 18 days, living in a wee fucking bunk bed somewhere on a, on a ship, cleaning toilets, fucking doing people's laundry, washing, everything. But my thing was that I went through a bit of a tough time. I was, I was crazy with gambling. I needed to work. I needed to look after my family. So my thinking was I need to go and work and just pay the bills. And that's, what, that's ultimately what it was. But I used to then, when I went onto the boat, I used to say to the guy, fucking, could I, could I maybe just work in the kitchen? And he says, why? I said, do the dishes or something. He's like, uh, why? I said, because I don't want to see anybody. I didn't want to see anybody. So, see, in the kitchen it was fine. I could just fucking pot about and nobody batted an eyelid. And all the staff that I worked with were, were, were great up until the guy that I worked with sold the story about me working there. Picture, nah, I took pictures of me while I was working. And then I used to come out and people say, Oh, that's Big Kev, what are you doing here? And I used to fucking I straight away say that. I used to straight away think, Oh, fucking hell, man, that's, that's made me feel really. And I used to just lie and say, Oh, just needed a job and wanted to get out of the house and uh, this is what I'm doing now and I'm trying to get to offshore and I'm trying to get to the, I'm trying to start at the bottom and make my way to the top and feel really insecure about it. And then I stuck with that job for two years through all that talk, two years. I, 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 the only reason I gave up that job was because the contract actually ended. So after that, you did an interview, Kev, with me and then did I message you to come on the podcast? Ah, you'd asked me a week later or so, do you want to come and just talk about football? And I was like, what, what's it about? And he just says, we're just going to have a general chat about the weekend's games. And I was like, oh, I can, I can honestly, I don't think you watched sports in your first. No, I, I didn't. I didn't. I just came in and winged it, and I've been doing that ever, ever since. since. <laughs> so, uh, no, I came in and uh, enjoyed it. What about the first time you met Slenny Boy? Mate, I was at Hamden. No, no, I remember. I came here. Came to Hamden. Was it the podcast with Sai Kev um, was on that day, and then after it, he was doing the Christmas special, man. And I was talking to Kenny, Kenny, no Kenny Miller, Mark Botchell. That was a blast of pass. That was quite good chatting to him because they were on a, a UEFA course. And there was a couple of other guys. They're not popped this fucking geezer, man. He had the black leather jacket on. For half a few quid that one. Aye, uh, he had the black leather jacket on, and I was like, 
It's this guy for real, and straight away, like an instant, I was like, this guy's fucking super funny. funny huh? What was your what was your first thoughts of Big Kev? I thought he was fucking hilarious. Didn't he? Uh-huh. After it came out, his mouth was brilliant. And it was actually, do you know what was genius about it? It was a Christmas. It was a oh, that, was Christmas. The, that was when you came into your own. So it was a Christmas night, so, uh, night out stories. I was like, this guy's fucking nuts. And then si, I said, si, who, who I actually whispered to him afterwards, who, who is this guy? He went, remember the guy that went away to Holland and did what he did? And I went, no fucking way. I remember reading that story. But at the first mate, it was a total carry on. The amount of things that we had to cut out was unbelievable. I man. know. It was a free for all at the start, mate. It was, I think we've kind of calmed down a, a wee bit and uh, we've had a wee bit more football chat. But at, at first, it was like, this is unbelievable. I'd love to get the tapes. Uh, the unedited podcasts. Ah, nah, you get jailed. But we'd be in jail. Right? You'd be jailed, <laughs> wouldn't you? How many stuff for open goals did you do before the, the, the sleeve joke with Charlie? But do you know what I can remember? I remember you phoning me his first podcast. No, voice notes it was, and you're like, mate, that was slain. It was unreal. And do you know the bit you loved? Was when we were trying to talk serious and he he was asking him, where are we going for a lunch? Can we all go for a lunch after this? See, <laughs> see, now, right? That sounds just so normal. Yeah. Because but at that time, well, like, as much as we were there. relaxed, there was no MD, like, we just didn't care. As much as we we were relaxed, we do, he just was proper, wouldn't he just be in his cell? So, when I remember seeing that first podcast and he's done the, the he did tennis and all, I was like, oh, that's unbelievable. The banter was frightening. It was just lads just playing a game and being their cell. And I remember you obviously being at Celix, so I knew what you were like, but to see that actually on a podcast was brilliant. So did you get in touch with each other? Because that was your first time on camera. No, mate. Uh, no, I don't think so. I think I made well, you asked me for a tap. That's right. You a- messaged a- me a for money? a tap. A tap of money? <laughs> <laughs> no, I fight for your butt on tap my eyes. Right. But do you know, I was really nervous going down there. Um, I was really nervous, mate, that show. But at first, I think that's where the good girl song came from. I think I was that nervous. I went, fuck, I need to come out with something here. But mate, see the, him spinning around the chair? Aye. Genius, tell it side. We are literally sitting on... So the cameras are all set up and uh, they were like that, right, he's ready to go. And we were like, we need to do something with you with this suit. And then just between the three of us, we're like, spin round. And then me and Charlie will just make it like it's me and Charlie and we're going to podcast. And we'll say that you lost a suit in Lennox Town. And just all came together. Just because we'd, we'd, we'd fought about me barging in the door. Into the door, that's right. Oh, God, barging me into the door and go, like, where the fuck did you start with it? We are something like that, or where have you been? But then it was that seat was unbelievable. Because see, when you do watch the start of the podcast, you can't even you, see. You can't see Aye, nothing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, where's that? I always want to say to you, your gear's terrible today, but where's that uh, Where's that velvet suit you used to have? What one? The one you used to wear in the train, remember? William McStay borrowed it. That's you ended right. up keeping it. I ended up, I left it and stole for Lennox Town. I wore it, wore it in one day and then um, ended up having to get him and say, gear, couldn't they find it? Somebody stole it. What sort of error are we talking? Error <laughs> <laughs> <Are they> sure? <laughs> but see, see when, because we never spoke about him singing a song. So see when the chairs spun round? Aye. See, see when me and Charlie were sitting, were you sitting thinking, what can I say when I spun round to you? Aye. Was it a good girl? Yes, I was. Aye. I'd never heard that before. I was... No, I was I sitting made up there. No, was what? I made it up. Where's all my good girls? Where's all my bad girls? I'm talking, talking, talking about those bloodlines. <laughs> yeah. oh, oh, oh. But then the suit story, I think you told one about Ross McCormick's suit being too big for us. And then, remember, he, you, I think that's the best story I know. I think it's the one talked greatest. about the most. That was a great Think so? I remember watching it back and looking at me and you, mate, and we were absolutely gone, man. Oh, my God, mate. Well, I'm going to tell you something now, and I'm really, really sorry, Dad, because I love you to bits. I'll tell you why my silly career didn't go well. Because the day I signed, me and my man, and Dad went, and my dad turned up with a suit on. It was too big for him. And he shook Peter Lowell's hand, and the suit jacket was over his fingers. <laughs> <laughs> any time I see anybody with like any sort of long sleeve, mate, it's the first thing I think of. His dad. His dad's suit. It was true, alright. I remember it. I mean, so talk us through. You walk in and say like Pat Peter Law comes and meets us. Peter Law meets us, kiss my cap. Have you clocked that his suit jacket no. was bagging in the motor? I remember I in the motor waiting for us to come out. Because where was he? Say his hand was it? You couldn't see it. <laughs> I know. It's it's, it was in a handbrake. Ah, wasn't it? <laughs> 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 He's been in the first. <laughs> No, so I remember, so when I, I was in the house and they had to run in the motor ready to take us to the silly part. And um, so I've got in the back, so I've not seen the suit. So we've got, and I think my man, uh, me and my ma walked forward. So we met them all and stuff like that. So You're I don't going to walk backwards, eh? <laughs> I really think so. <laughs> Fucking hell. 
when we were walking through uh, to sell it uh, to the to the office room through the corridor, Peter Lawwell and my dad are talking, and I like to my eye, look at his suit, what the fuck is he wearing? His ass, mate, it's tight. so tight, had like boys' trousers on with the biggest jacket in the world, right? So I'm like to my man, my man was like, what trousers has he got on? I kind of get what he's wearing here, right? Because I pure showing up, you didn't see that part, fuck, biggest day of our life, sort of. So we got in the meeting, Peter Lawwell's going on his own, bang, dad's suit, you I'm like that. His horns went missing. <laughs> and I sat there like that. This is when I first started. And John Park looked at me and went, You alright, pal? You look all the other place. And I'm like, I'm fine. And he was like, We don't fucking need shite bags at this club, pal. And I'm like, I just felt like saying, What am I, I fucking, I fucking up against, mate? Goodness me, man. <laughs> Do you know what we've not even spoken about? So, uh, we all have this coming on rehearsals, mucked up, production, whatever. Two parts of the show got cancelled like, before we went out. Bobby Madden. So they did. Bobby Madden was supposed to be on it in the hydro. And it, what was it, an hour, hour and a half before, before the show says he couldn't make it? Yeah. And Lewis Ferguson for, for Heady Tennis That's pulled right. it. To be fair, Bobby Madden, that was him. That was him just nailing the coffin in his open goal career. Do you know who else lightened the mood when Charlie came out and danced under the rehearsals, mate? That was funny, man. Oh. To his music. I've never seen news like that before the hydro. Mm. So I arrived there and then the guy took me up to the green room and I walk in the green room having never met Tommy Gravison. But you're expecting us to be there as well? Expecting news to be there. But we're not rehearsing. And I walk in, you are obviously rehearsing, I walk in and uh, he's sitting just having his dinner. And I'd never met him, I was like, how are you doing? I didn't introduce myself, I introduced myself to his, his mates. And he was like quite serious, just chatting dead serious about what he does. And, and I was like, all right, sound. And, um, and then I came, I went, good, don't get used. That's how I know. See, see if it was a good laugh. He just stayed with Tommy for the full thing that, and you've came to the rehearsal, that means that... He was serious, right, but I knew there's a bit of madness in this guy. You could tell by talking about him. Yeah. So talking to him, sorry. So I just wanted to go down and see the stage and see what you were doing down there. Went on the stage, man. You were nervous, man. Hold on a minute. How have I been taking abuse about meltdowns when this guy was worrying about Stephen Craigan for about four hours before the show? Four days he's going to break his show. leg and all that. Oh, but you can see he's actually going to break my leg. I'm telling you, this guy's got a nasty <laughs> state. He's going to break my leg. I can't see him telling you he's going to come in and he's going to do me. I didn't see the night before. I thought you didn't. I was like, Keep it all go fucking nasty with me. <laughs> yeah, as if I was going to date <laughs> something. I'd free. Remember that? that remember having your trousers? The trousers? I'm holding your trousers and you're ironing them. No, I had to hold his t shirt as well while you're like, ironing it as well. Then the hydro really in 30 like minutes, hold that t shirt. Is that yours? Hydro didn't even get an iron. And then Frank and Derek came, man. And I'm not, I love them a bit, but you're getting ready for it. And they were, I could just, wherever I went, mate, it was like that there. But then I thought, Derek, Derek's a wee bit steaming again. So I had that worry as well. What's he going to do on the stage, mate? And then he ended up going fucking... Do you know what? Uh, everybody... Two heroes went in the oh, I didn't know Frank was in the bar outside the hydro. Everybody oh, drank. I drank with everybody all day and he's doing the show. It's amazing though, well, At least Frank can drink. Derek goes out of that bar. That was, that's the biggest worry, yeah. By the way, so I told you earlier what my favourite one is. My second favourite, hands down, was the tenant show. Oh, yeah, that tenant show was the was best. Was it Gary Locke the first one, sorry? Best Gary Locke, eh? That, that, that's, I think that could be my f favourite show ever. Yeah. That was amazing, mate, wasn't it? Because we never, I hadn't, we had never done it in live or in it. The, the tenants thing I thought was like the pinnacle because they were quite a big deal. The only oh, thing was that was straight. That was genius, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. I used to think like, there was only like 40, 50 people in there, maybe. I don't know how yeah. many was in. And I was thinking, why are we not doing this to a bigger audience? But it was all part of the process. But like that was your, was that the leopard print, am I right? Or the big, uh, big shot. Oh. It was where all, all my good girls again, wasn't it? Oh, did you get You know how to rip the arse out of someone, don't you? Aye, aye. Was it, where's all my good girls? Aye. Aye. Where's all my good girls? Where's all my bad girls? <laughs> But I don't know with the live show because that went unbelievable that tennis one minute. Yeah, that but that was brilliant. wild that crowd as well that night, wasn't it? You were talking to the two women at the front and that. I was good. I was brilliant. Oh, she is absolutely beautiful, <laughs> and so is she. Uh, and then the fringe, fringe was brilliant, wasn't it? <laughs> Tough, 
but I'm sure. What did they four shows at the fringe? Four. It was amazing. Thinking about the, it was generally crowd were wild. I jump out. When I came out, I jumped into the crowd. Took about ten people down, right? And when I stood up, somebody's like shouting at me, like because I've took him down. Pointing his fingers, pointing the other way. But this broke his finger. Fire. Mate, do you know what it was like? The fringe. It was in a nightclub, so it was like um, Eminem and Eight Mile. Aye, like pure compact in it. Fucking jumping, mate. <laughs> Then he jokingly obviously said, we'll sell out Hydro. And then I thought, oh, fucking Hydro, don't be so stupid. I still game at the Hydro, we got invited there. And we were right at the box. I think Jilly, Steph and uh, Sarah and that were in. We were in that box watching it. And I remember us sitting there and he's like, oh, mate, we could do this, no problem. So the three of us were sitting, wasn't it? There's only, it's, it's actually, it was, I think it was like months and months before that. When I'd done a, my first cookie show. And I, said, I came out and said like, we're going to sell it to Hydro or we're going to do the Hydro. But, but see on the Hydro, so we put, the producers put out a tweet saying, if we get 13,000 likes, we'll do the Hydro. And we went to Sanctuary that night and I think we put in the, got put in the group chat saying, by the way, that's just got 13,500 likes. And about five hours. And about five hours. But the worst part was we get paps at the Hydro. And we got, we, we got chucked out the Hydro. Mate. And I, then the next day, for him going to a security guard, the guy that was, looked after us the full night, but then we were steaming. And he's like, the guy, you going up the night? And the guy was like, ah, up there, and he's like, Mars with a toothbrush. <laughs> <laughs> guy was like out, and then that. So we me, and him, to me and him are walking like that night, we're doing the hydro stairs, and we're getting top room. It was like about eight security, security guards guard. escorting us out, weren't we? Uh -huh. And then we went to sanction that night, didn't Sanctuary, we? Sanction, uh -huh. I was like, we can't even send the flipping hydro, and then when obviously the producer phoned to say that's what's booked the hydro, and then even even then, like the the problems we had trying to get the hydro, they were like maybe maybe he's a suited to the armadillo. But we went and spoke to hydro. That was that day we were in Silverburn. We met the producer again, and he's like, ah, hydro don't want us to do it. What is the, I think we should do the armadillo first, and we were like, ah, fucking no chance. No man. chance. What's the capacity in that armadillo? 3,000. Ah, because uh, they, they were like, I think a podcast, don't do the hydro, try the armadillo, so I say, but you're like, no chance, we'll get this. Is we it, had to put up a bit, it was a, bit, a, a risk of staying in the hydro, mate. I could, I could actually put your company. Uh, I could have bust us, uh. I remember that, that day that I went on sale for, I think we'd be in, we in a group chat. What were we doing? Uh, group chat was never met. Sitting in my kitchen, mate, like that, my heart was fucking pounding, eh? And then we obviously got the hydro and then to phone that Friday morning and say the majority of tickets are sold. He says, we're going to open up the rest of them at, uh, at nine o'clock. Opened up at nine o'clock and then to get that phone call to say, we've sold at the hydro at 12 o'clock. I was like, holy shit. A few years later, your heart was pounding off or something different, wasn't it? Because when it sold out, how, how, what was it, five years? Faster than Beyonce. Five years, uh-huh. Faster than Beyonce. Wow. That's unbelievable, mate, isn't it? Uh -huh. Need to get Gravis in, man. Need to get Gravis in, so... But I asked Tommy, and he's like, I'll do it if you come over to Denmark, lad. And I think it was like six flights to get there, mate. And he's the type of guy that you could get on there six flights and get there and go, I'm not, I'm not doing it. I don't know why you're here. So we're like, ah, nah, we've got this, we've got a live show maybe coming up. We're maybe going to do the Hydro. Would you do that? And he's like, yeah, I'll do it, lad. I'll do it. So we're like, yes, yeah, buzzing. We're going to announce Tommy Gravis and bang COVID hits, obviously. We got a second date, didn't it? Uh -huh, second date. And I get put back again, didn't it? I remember being in lockdown for the first date, and that night I got absolutely, the night the hydro was meant to be, I got absolutely steaming, man. And that was the first time in lockdown I was kind of like, I'm fucking done with this lockdown, man. Hit a brick wall, because well, that hydro was meant to be. That, that was uh -huh. horrible that night, wasn't it? I had a pure melt, a bit of meltdown, man, in my house. So you don't remember, that was horrible, mate. Because uh -huh. we were obviously meant to be doing it that night, uh -huh. and we're just stuck in the house. That was terrible. And then, was that a third date you could put back again? Was that a third? I remember there was a period where you just, you just generally didn't think it would happen. I didn't think it was ever going to happen. But then Zoom was actually good, man, because we've got Ollie McBurney on, who was brilliant. Charlie Austin came on. You could get a lot more guys doing South because Danny it was Graham through Zoom. Was good. But then this guy had a Wi-Fi that was slower than Kev's metabolism. Wow, mate. Every second just cut out. But also at times I thought you were kidding on your, your oh, Wi-Fi. Uh, generally three or four. I have to shut the laptop down and I'm like, I can't do this. <laughs> what well, I had to do, my heart's broke again. Nothing, mate. So see, when you had your meltdown this time and Andy was on me, Kevin, Andy, were you watching them? 
Tell the truth. Then I try and act uh, hard or cool. No, I probably would have watched them, mate. I can't remember. Were you sitting, were you, did you feel any sort no, of No, mate, I, did, I genuinely, at that time, I was like, I'm not going back. Did I, tell, did I say that, didn't I? Uh, at the time? Just kept thinking, myself, I'm not going back, yeah. That's all, oh, mate. See, when you, we're not on it. My Instagram is where Slaney, where Slaney, but I'm like, ah, mate. <laughs> get <laughs> back on this podcast. There's one guy, a couple, there's a lot of people, but there's one guy who kept, he kept writing after every, every podcast, Andy, Andy's shite on you. And every, no, you're scared of Andy. Huh? Scared of Andy, Andy's shite on you, he kept writing. And the next Tuesday we come, Andy's shat in your head again. I'm like, mate, come on, just get a break. Andy's shat on you. Shat on you again, I'm like, ah, oh, mate. Yeah, I, can't I, can't, I couldn't imagine this, this podcast without you now. No, nah, fuck, no way. But was the hydro... Part of the reason that you thought I'm gonna to need to go back at some stage because I'm gonna to need to do the hydro. Yeah, you couldn't miss that, couldn't you not? Uh-huh. You could not miss that. <laughs> so was he then a different guy when once we all appeared? He was a bit more relaxed when he saw you, obviously, because he knows you. So it's like he just met me, so he's not gonna like. And then you came, and then he was a bit more relaxed what, and good. What were we saying to him before we went on it? I can't really you remember. You were terrorising on my back. I remember I said to him, I've been knocking a wife and that, and he's like, I've been to David Beckham's party and spoke to Elle McPherson, lad. And I was like, what does that mean? I was like, remember I'm there. Remember he kept saying to you, though, Si? Oh, funny guy. You never played with Real Madrid? Do you know who David Beckham is, lad? That's what he'd say to you. He's the best ever. Amazing. But then remember we went back to the dressing room. Because that meant I was like saying to my, I was like, oh, I heard you were like mad in your poker in Vegas. Like, no, it's never happened, mate. It's a lie. I know. That's a lie. That's a what? conversation. That's about six that. questions gone for the back. No, I said already. to him, how you doing, Tom? He went, and who are you? I went, hey, I'm Kevin. He said, who do you play for? He said, oh, I'm Sunderland and that. I played against you in the Premiership. He went, yeah, and what do you do now? He said, just work for DPD, mate. Hey, what the fuck happened to you? <laughs> so, did I remember that? I was like, he's so up, this is just, I just, life's, life takes you. He's not doing that in a bad way, Tommy. No, no, he's just, no, 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 no. Remember him showing us something on his phone? What was he showing us on his phone again? Stone Cold Storm, Shai Ferry, in, in 38 seconds of the show. Come on, Tommy. I'm going to do a lot of damage. Five to seven, just before we go out. That telly that was there the full day no showing the lost. live hydro crowd and at five to seven there was about two hundred people there. No, oh, even no. eight mate, we were meant to go. That five telly, to eight, sorry, five to eight. I've five said it eight. before, mate, that telly was a form of to- somebody's done that to, to, to torture us. Mate, five to eight there was about two hundred people in the crowd. That was me, we're meant somebody to hate somebody we've slaughtered on the podcast has came in the night before and put that telly there. No. Well linked to the crowd. We were meant to go to eight, weren't we? So at five to eight there was no doing we can you see him then somebody came up and said it's been put back there. Right? Right, two minutes later. Later. The show's been delayed twenty minutes after we'd been waiting seven hours. That, that was the worst time when I get put it back. Because like you're ready eight. to go then, you don't that want to wait any longer. Eight. But then wow. the shout of Right Boys five minutes were on. Let's Time go. to go. How's wow. it also? Wow. It's when you walk. By the way, that's when I would say I, I noticed you go a wee bit. Yeah. Aye. Definitely. Aye, you were, that's the first I've seen you a bit nervous. Aye. Because I, I, feel be... as, I feel as if you were all right through the day. We had our moments where we were having wee meltdowns, but for that five minutes yeah. to go and the walk to backstage. I was you, silent. Aye. aye. Yes, we've got him. It's the main man, Life in the Loudon Tavern, Andy Halliday. Thanks for coming on, mate. Cheers, mate. Thanks for having us. How are you doing? All right. Same as everybody, mate, toiling. But uh, it's not been great for my bank balance this, this lockdown, but it's been brilliant for my balance. I'm flying. <laughs> I was going to say, mate, then I open the window because if it's a strong wind, that'll go off. <laughs> 100%. <laughs> this is glued on, mate, trust me. So, what about the interview, right? I think it was Dell that asked your fan. Who asked you to do it and go? No, it was that my agent. So, like, oh, I, it, it was either the producer or you one of you's asked Aldo and uh-huh. Aldo get in touch with me he's like are you keen to do it and go and like I said about other people why, why they want to do it I was more than happy to do it because you don't people don't get to actually see that side of you and who you are you just want to come have, have a laugh have a, have a bit of banter and at that point fuck it wasn't doing anything so may as well just jump on and what about for stories wise were you asking did you text former teammates saying gay stories for going on this or did you just forget I think that's I think that's what I was going to say I think that's a worry with everyone it's like if you're put on the spot to obviously you don't need to try and be funny but go stories to tell and be a bit entertaining I've got the worst memory in the world but i just done what we still do now I text boys back in the day like what happened with this like can you remember stories from back then and people I, I, I remember 
it, so many people were telling me stories that I could tell of things I've done in the past, the things I've been involved in, but every single person was saying, you need to tell a you need to tell a Gigsy man. You need to tell a Gigsy man in Tenerife. So we're at this Kilwana Beach Club, right? So Gigsy <laughs> lightweight and steaming. So typical Gigsy when he's out and he's drunk, he just falls asleep. So he's fell asleep at the beach club in Kilwana, right? And I used to always try and make pranky people or whatever, right? So I, I, I was like, hey, I'm getting in here. So I just go, it was me, Scott Arfield, uh, Lee Wallace, and Jamie Murphy. So I just got a picture of a guy with swimming shorts on and his boss hanging out his swimming shorts, right? So I just, I just got a picture off of Google. So Greasy wakes up and I was like, oh no, Greasy, no. He's like, what, what, what? Look, Stephen, I was like, mate, look at this. Showed him the picture of the guy with his boss hanging out. I was like, mate, that's from Sky Sports News. You with your boss out. Right? going to a beach club. So he's like, no way, no way. No, but, I, but obviously... did you know, sorry, Andy, did you know that was going to go as big as it did? And did you tell McGregor that you were going to tell it? Aye, I did, aye. I knew it would go well because we know in football, like, you get some brilliant stories and changing rooms and stuff you do and trips and whatnot. And that's the funniest thing I've experienced because I know what Greasy's like. I know, I know how much, how much he fell for it, how much he took the bait for it. And obviously, we're no bad storytellers, which is probably why we did this. So I knew that that one would go down well, to be fair. Can I ask both of you this? See, after the interview, or even during it, did you realise how big it was going to be? His interview? Aye. Uh -huh, I could tell. Did you? See, when you told that crazy story, it's only one of the few times that the back, see, when I was, he was telling it, the back of my head was fucking sore for, for laughing. As soon as that interview came out, he texted me the next day and said, You're a fanny. That was the only text message I received from him for a full day. I couldn't believe how, how what was it, like, nearly three years? Three years and it I fucking on flew in. Uh -huh. I remember we were supposed to be going for dinner or something like that. So Jilly was doing the stairs. I was like, I'm doing this interview, it'll probably last about an hour or something. And after three years, I came doing the stairs. She's like, you fucking start, are you kidding on? I'm fucking starving here. But I absolutely flew in, man. See, before that interview, see, just on that, did, was there any thoughts in your mind about going into it? No, we wouldn't say we're media, but... Obviously, well, I mean, doing I, that now as well. But I, I was doing the radio at that point when oh, I just right? started it, but I'd only done maybe like two radio like shows, but it was only purely because obviously I was out of luck. You know, I didn't have a job. I was still trying to find a, a club at that time. I was speaking to clubs, but see, at this point, I, I always remember this. I, I was kind of name a team, but I was close. You just know I was close to signing for a team. Yeah. So obviously, doing that podcast, I'm thinking, doing, doing a couple of radio shows, I, I, I'm signing for a team in a couple of weeks, but it wasn't another, it was about three months. Before I ended up obviously signing my hearts after that. So at that point, you should obviously ask me. But you had a meltdown at another one of your meltdowns at this stage. So you were all, you were on a day in the podcast and then so Dan just texted you saying, Do you want to fancy? I remember you saying to me, I think it was like a couple of days after we sort of kept in touch for that and you kept saying to me, mate, the, the interviews went doing unbelievable and that. And I think it was the next next week after it was leading up to keeping the ball in the ground. He's like, mate, do you want to come on? Obviously, Slaney's not doing it. If you want to come on with, with me and Big Kev. At that point, I was more than happy to date. But do you know what was good for it? I remember like we came on for the next couple of weeks after it when you were on the on, there was a pure build up with people listening, like, can he wait to Andy V. Slaney? Like, they come oh, reach out, what's it going to be like? But you actually, so I remember the first one that you came on, we'd done it at the Barras. Yeah. And you never came on at the start and you came halfway through. But I don't think we actually showed. No, no. And he went, he left. He left. He, he popped his head in and left. He fucked off, aye. So I, so I came down, I was going to come on it, pop in, um, seen my head, seen, his, seen four of laughing. Bobby like, Madden was on actually. Bobby, Bobby Madden, Madden was on. We were all laughing. Listen, before he's laughing, I went, must be having a good time, man. See you later on. <laughs> What's wrong with you? Do you know what, mate? I'm I moving to remember it. Right? But, but he, I think he walked, he finished it at the bar and then walked to the back. Guitar, guitar in the back. <laughs> Popped the heater in it, Lalo. See you later. <laughs> uh, to be fair, I remember that the, third part, the first podcast we'd done together. What were people worrying about, mate? We were always going to go on board. I think I've come in with a mentality. I actually shut my pants. Like that. <laughs> my first was like, and do you remember me and you were pals at school, mate? <laughs> I remember you kept saying that. Never you never used to be pals at school, 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 school. you never talked to me since. I think it was a, a, a decoy, but so he didn't come for us, that mean? Because he wasn't really involved in the hydro when it got in his way. Do you remember, though? Like, you, I remember when you asked me, remember it started saying, I'm not doing it because. Ah, yeah, you kept saying that. I, I, I've had banter, we, we've had banter about the podcast where I said you've sold out the hydro and I've just thought, fuck this, I'm coming on riding the wave. But I actually didn't want to date because people bought tickets to see Use 3. You sold out because Use 3 were brilliant on the podcast. Even the mix between Use 3, although you never really, you felt as if it had to change, which to be honest, we still do that anew. Uh -huh. We still feel as if we wanted to change and cause it evolved, but it, you sold out because Use 3 were brilliant on it. So I, I felt as if I can not then just jump on when people have not bought tickets for me to be there. But you done it anyway. But I fucking thought, fuck it, let's just do it anyway. And it worked out. You go to a stage when it, it's impossible for him to come on, when it off. Yeah. Couldn't know come on. Uh -huh.
do you think SWG3 helped us then that just a couple of months before the Hydro? SWG3, I'm a great believer in life that everything happens for a reason. So if we go right back to what we talked about earlier, me, First one. me going to the football with the kids, meeting Si, that was meant to happen that time. Me maybe going to work in the Shetland Islands and being a taxi driver, that was also meant to happen. But SWG3 and the Hydro getting cancelled due to the pandemic was supposed to happen. And we learned a lot of valuable lessons at that show. A lot was great and the people enjoyed it. There was a lot of there was a lot to be to, to be taken from that. But I would think I think on the on the on the very first day, my my God, if you're ever feeling as low as you feel, Michael Gardine, goodness me, how bad did he feel driving him? Oh mate. Midge texted me saying, right, mate, I'll come on, but didn't ask us any shitty stories. And I'm not making an ar I'm trying to get a club, but no, I'm, a club not a I'm not gonna do anything and I'm making an ass of myself. Ten minutes in he had his jeans down at his ankles, didn't he? <laughs> he's spotty he's getting, ass was he's getting five balls rattled at his ass for but half Andy. an hour. But we'll, we'll be honest, sorry to interrupt you, Paul, but the, the main part of the story is well, we're underprepared, aren't we? Ah, no, that's what that's honest. what I was about to take it to Simon. And the thing is we always are as, as, as much as we joke, we ha we're very professional, we want it to be the best we can be, but I don't think any's actually knew what we're going out today. But everything went wrong though, didn't it? Like props, preparation, mind, mind the DJ you not know, playing the music. That's like. what sort of fucked it because you see that the atmosphere when everybody came out was electric and then I should have just walked out though because my tune didn't play. That was a bad night. I've made all, all, all the paper bloke, remember it was pure windy. Oh aye, and we all lost all sheets. No, we lost it, aye. Every question was gone after five minutes into the show, so we played 40 games of Red for the I next think, half an hour. I think I can the first three and a half years on own signing, that's the first time I've saw him fucking like angry and disappointed. Simon was fucking wasn't very happy. Was. That it, was actually scared of you that night. But that, that on, on, on obviously on, actually on the stage, I've never felt it like that. Always were kind of fucking stuck. Wait till my clock, my watch mate, and it was twenty five minutes. Uh, it went back fifteen minutes. <laughs> Can you wait? Start the clock went back, like, back during the first day. <laughs> SWG three. Anyway, it's a bit. Midge another shite story. That was it. That was a shout. It's done me. Midge told three shite stories already. Something like that. Right, Midge gives another shite story. I'll tell it. Anyway, we need to, we need to talk about the dressing room after it though. That right. was good. Wasn't it? Some some good scraps though, weren't there? I've never. That was that's what I'll say. It should be that should have been filmed because everybody, every single body was screaming apart from me. I was the only one that didn't say a word. You were a mouse. Turned a, into Paul no, Heckenbottom. No, you turned into Paul Heckenbottom, mate. See, after that first night, I don't know if you remember, right? Saturday, I think we were all wee, but like, this is we are fucking it's hopeless. Christian and then Christian Eriksen happened, mate. That's right, aye. We were thinking, what a terrible start. Obviously, the first night, and then this has happened. Thought that was going to get cancelled, didn't it? Aye. And we're like, this isn't going to happen. I thought the full thing would get cancelled. Because if that all get cancelled, then people would have remembered us for that first night. Yeah. Because Capaldi came the first night when he was like, what the fuck was that? Yeah, that's yeah. right. He told, only told us that. I told you later on, aye, yeah. when he said, that, like, well, I saw he's the first but, night, I thought, what are you doing? See, to be fair, some of the shows we had that had after it were brilliant, weren't they? What was your favourite? Well, can you remember a favourite? The Scotland games. The Scotland, Scotland games. games. Unbelievable. Scotland, England, the Friday night. Was it a Friday night? Aye. That was unbelievable. Unbe all the Scotland games were brilliant. Oh. See, for us being four, four plebs, man, like some of the ideas that were, and the producers didn't even bigger pleb, some of the, <laughs> some of the ideas that we came up with, like the entrances for the Scotland games in particular were unbelievable. Yeah. William Wallace, the train spotting one. Remember we were all sitting in the back of the bus and you flung the pint over, that well, was... See that, the entrance, I mean, that's when I realised <sighs> we've got a lot of geniuses in camp here, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. Some of the ideas... Came up with some good ideas, didn't we? Aye. Who, who do you think was the best guest that we got Charlie. on for the live show at SWG3? Charlie, I think. That's the thing I noticed when I turned up with that SWG3 is I was a little fresh because I hadn't done anything yet, but you are fair play. His man was at 29, 22. 20, 22 in a row like that. Charlie was more nervous for the SWG. 100%. He? Why? I wonder why that is. It was live, really. And I knew that uh, I, I, I never actually gave it a second thought about what was even happening. And then all of a sudden you're on a stage, you're going mental, you're stoning there, it's a wee bit. Oh, you're like, what's going to happen? This is before we went on. I'm like, yeah. what's going to happen here? You still want to expect it. tennis as well, mate. Uh, I know. I bet I'll do Bag of jaggies at head tennis. Was Wasn't it My been? touch oh, saved me the, the hydro with the head tennis, I know, to be fair. Oh, that's forgotten. Because we get there, it? You know. After that touch of the. 
But uh, no, it was good. It was but good see the time. SWG, mate, you done two shows. The first one, obviously, but, but the second one, he came out his own, didn't he? Ah, the, the second, second one, you came out your own. Again, That's right? when you knew this guy's ready for it. Uh, and I think it was maybe after that, we says to you, would you, would you do the hydro? Aye. So, no brainer. Was there any second thoughts if 13 times people, I don't know if I could do that? Or? No, I never, mate. No chance. Because. Just chilled out at the time, no, just because we'd done that and then we'd done the pod. I mean, it's different. It's harder for you. You're you are doing this. You are maybe. I mean, you had to go on the hydro on your day, announce and start off by, and get the timings of people coming on. Oh, Whereas yeah. I'm just coming on and I'm okay, just yeah. as if you're sitting with the lads, isn't it? Really? That was doing my best time. Like to hit, to be involved in that for a month. Seeing these every day was out there. Dude, So it was about five weeks before it, wasn't it? We got the green light for the hydro. I know, imagine when that, when they come through to say we were actually going to date, they didn't use think, oh fuck. I think as well, when we eventually says it was up by up and run again, we are on the show, like with COVID related, if everyone could get I in get with a vaccine, oh, it was worth. like, I know. so we thought it could be like a limited capacity crowd in that as well, which would never have been the same, would it? No. no. Oh no, I, I mean, I think we were so lucky, I think that day we were kind of worried if it was going to go ahead with, because of the vaccine passport, and then Nicola Sturgeon announced that she it was going to go back. Aye, that's right. She, that delayed, she, she delayed the two, the, uh, two weeks because it wasn't in full swing, and that allowed a lot of people. Because obviously, when you put things out there on the social media, people don't really understand what you're trying to tell them. Yeah. So there's a lot of indecision about can I go, can I no go, because I'm no double vaccinated. And so then everybody was green light to go, and then it was just a case. So I think once she announced, the main guest, that was a big... I know, but even that was... Because he'd agreed to do it two years ago, we were like... Is, Aye, is he going to do it? What, where Aye. is he now after two years? Man? I told you, my, worry was, always, my, my worry was always because like, the stories you've told is they said the date, and imagine we just turned up the hydro and never came. Yeah. Did we have any contact with him? Uh, the producer spoke to him, but one day he was doing it, the next day he wasn't sure. And what, I think one day we phoned him and he was like, yeah, okay, I'll do it, lad. And then the next day you'd phone him and I don't, I don't know what you're talking. No, I, I'm not sure. I don't know. Phone me back tomorrow, and, and you're like, mate, is this guy doing this or no? And then that was when he's like, okay, I'll do it, but get Simon to phone me on the nineteenth at six o'clock. This was only, this was like three weeks before the nineteenth. I was like, why can't I just phone him the night and get over? So for three weeks, I'm like, I'm gonna need, to, I'm not gonna need to sell this to this guy because I hadn't spoken to him for about ten years, mate. So I didn't know how he would. And there was a lot of things. So went there like. You weren't sure if he was going to be raging that you said this or said that. Because you somebody will say something about that. That's right, mate. So obviously the producer's like that. The first time you asked him about doing the hydro, he's like that. So Tell Simon to stop telling lies about me. And I was like, is he raging with me, man? And then he said about the three weeks wait. So I'm like, how am I playing this when I phone him? And then they know see about, um, we'll give the fans what they want. Uh, me and Simon will give the fans what they've been waiting for or something. I'm not the, per I'm not the, I'm not the person I was 13 years ago, lad. See, after we'd spoke for five minutes, mate, back into like the old way. So at first he was a wee bit kind of cagey and then after five minutes, ended up sitting on the phone for like 30, 40 minutes, getting a proper laugh. And then that, and then he's like, okay, I'm looking forward to it now, lad. I'll see you on the, the 16th. And I was like, well, do you want to meet? He's like, no, no, I won't meet you tonight before. I won't see you before. I, I'll see you at the show. I want to put all my concentration. And I was like, you want to come out? We're going to sign. He's like, stop speaking about what's going to happen before and after. Let's do the show and we'll see where we're at. But did you not find yourself even like that week leading up to me? I'd be sitting in the motor with my kids and they'd be, uh, they'd be asking me questions, mate. And I would just be sitting thinking how to tell me, just running my stories and my right. jokes through in my head and not even listening. Yeah, I, I was, was totally different. I, I, I didn't even, I don't think I thought about the hydro until the actual. Uh, you didn't have a story, story about three days before that, so. I, <laughs> I just, uh, it didn't, it didn't, it wasn't stressing me out because C ones obviously we did the, 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 the thing at the dry gate, the kind of pre run type thing of ideas. I just knew that if everybody says their bit and I eventually find a story somewhere in the locker, this will be amazing. See, that's when see, that's when I knew that, no worries, man. See, when Charlie came and watched this rehearse, yeah. he phoned me that night and he's like, mate, you have not got a thing ah, to worry about, man. It's going to be brilliant. Everyone's going to love it. It's proper. Every that open goal wants. He's like, you have nailed it, man. And then after that, I was kind of like, fuck, let's go, man. I knew why you were feeling the way you were, but I knew that's what I was saying to you. I was saying, this is going to be brilliant because people just want to come and see you, you know what I mean? As much as we, we enjoy it, we want to make it, we do want to make it brilliant for everyone, course, don't we? Mate. So you're, we're questioning everything with, with a crowd like this, with a crowd like that, and it's you get it all in, like all caught up in your own head, don't you? As, as if it's going to go well. But for the moment we walked out, man, it was just unbelievable, wasn't it?
But see, when, see what you said about your mind going back. See, five minutes before it, mate, I'm trying to think of my stories, what I'm going to say when I first walk out. Aye. And it's gone. And I'm having a wee bit of a panic up. And see, when I went out on that stage, mate, I swear to God, I just spoke. I didn't know what I was saying. What's that? What's that? What's that? I couldn't believe, I know you'd, you'd obviously were going to do it, you stood on the couch, because you, your legs are trembling, everybody's Aye. legs are gone. Couldn't believe it either. Though. I thought you were going to fall, mate. But you're proud, Si, you, I mean, we, me oh. and Andy are still and watching it, and all we see is fucking, he's bouncing, bouncing, you're like, this is good. Mate. The crowd reaction when he oh, first went through it. I couldn't even, because I wasn't sure, obviously, but they were just bouncing. Like, see, I never even, see how you heard that? I couldn't even tell you what nah. the reaction was like. But the reaction to funny. everybody, not just Simon, like him, the build up, and even like, I got an applause, and then Andy, Andy was great because the VT, I and mean, then obviously like, Slaney's was fucking, that, that, like, that was a bit, that's when you've got to put your hands up to the ideas from the producer and everybody at the table. That was genius with the whole Ford Keelan. That that bit ah, there, brilliant, that, that was right. brilliant. Because Even that the was wee like, things with the Gucci tag the hanging, Gucci out, the tag hanging yeah, out, yeah. the fucking Lynn with the goalie gloves and the two, Andy's misses and Sai's misses, obviously Slane has fired into them beforehand. It was superb. Can and I then, fling a wee firebomb in there? I think the VT preparation for the next hydro is better. So do I. So do I, mate. I right. think it's better. Yeah. Yeah. Right. The ideas so far out. have been unbelievable. They have been genius. Though. And we all were sitting at the back of all watching Sai up there and you could see 12,000 people just sitting watching them. How did you feel before you went out of that I stage? felt like you kept looking at my arse. And then up he went and then it was just that wave of noise and I was like, holy fuck man, listen to that. And then just obviously walking up I was like, here we go. As soon as you got to the level, you realised it was going to be okay because there was that much bright lights in front of us, you couldn't actually see anybody. So that kind of like relaxed everyone and then sat on the couch and then just try to block everybody out, just realise that there's nobody there. We're just hearing a chat on the couch, just hearing a chat on the couch and just go with it. But it was a surreal experience. I'm just glad it was our caught in camera and we're able to talk about it. So when, so when did you... When do you know you're coming out? Am I, say, am I just kind of introducing you? Well, obviously, mine's was different because like, you you get the one minute you're out. I know the VT started for my intro with the line of duty stuff. So, fucking production the cues again. I could know you see them? That could, could you see the line no, of duty? Yeah, it, no, right. no, I couldn't see it. But obviously, you could still hear it. Yeah. So, I know when obviously they announce Mr. H or whatever, and then the music starts. I know it's about 10, 15 seconds into the music, but I, I had to go. And see, but honestly, right, as much as like, the nerves they leading up to it, the, the meltdown with the, the rehearsal and whatnot. When I knew it was going out, it was it was unreal. See just when Andy comes out, and then how do you does that feel like forever when he's out? There? Mate, I'm not joking. That must have been a fucking set wind up. How long you took to get me out? Because we went back and forth for a wee bit. That was brilliant, that, boys, and that. Huh? But I was like, hurry up, please. You need to get the maestro on as soon as possible, don't you? But it's good to build them up, innit? You need to build them up, mate. Uh, that was, I remember I was saying, because when I had the scooter and you had to carry it up the stairs. Mate, you were a wee bit thinking about it, you had a few conversations. That I kept get... speaking to the guy, I was like, do we keep the scooter up the stairs when I walk up? But it didn't make sense, because obviously VT, I'm coming along the scooter. And I honestly, mate, and then, see when I got out, I went, 
I've came up the stairs and went into the scooter. My legs were fucking shaking. So yeah. I drove, I, you, you actually see it. I threw the scooter down quickly. Yeah. I actually thought I was going to fall off the scooter. And then what, straight into the stories? Straight into the stories. No, I said the, the, the cracker with my dad and Rosette. Oh, that was good. Susie Slade is in VIP! <laughs> but hey, Joel Slade is in Raw fucking Z! <laughs> Restricted fucking view! <laughs> Me and Gravis stood at the side and watched you. Oh, did you? Right? Gravis is. No, no. So I'm, we can't hear you because it's bouncing off the um, it's bouncing off the walls. We need we need speakers. <laughs> so obviously the crowd, we I'm thinking to myself, oh no, the speakers on the bottom because we want. I was having to tune right in and hear you. So Gavison couldn't hear a thing you were saying, and he's asking me, oh, no. what even is this lad? <laughs> And I'm like, ah, it's a podcast that's done well. So obviously it's like, he's like, but what is it? Is it funny? And I'm like, ah. <laughs> I was like, ah, it's funny. I said, it was quite, to me, it seemed a bit, he's a wee bit, didn't know what to expect here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you know what was a buzz for me to see after the stories went down so well? And I knew that Charlie was coming on next. That's when I knew, like, I looked at my watch, I think I had like 20 minutes, 25 minutes left. And I was like, it's kind of go wrong now because that's went well. You know he's going to be brilliant when he comes on. We're, we're fucking cracked it, man. Joe, how did you feel at the bottom of the stairs before you came on, mate? <clears throat> now, that was a, that was the most nervous I was. So you were saying I was quite relaxed before it, and then just then I was like, "Get me a Moretti." I said to the guy, "Did you? Is that the first beer you had?" Aye, I, I was like, it was the second, and uh, I had that, and then I was waiting, and it was going on and on and on. I thought just need on there. Do you know that way? Just. <laughs> <laughs> Then Charlie came at me with their preddies on. That could be my favourite thing in the whole show. Like, everyone was amazing, but she just sitting watching him, mate, how relaxed he was. Be a suit and preddies on. Suit and a pair of blue preddies on, man. Mate, what a reception he got though, didn't he? When you came out. Once I was out there and I was a bit more relaxed, it was fine, and then um, obviously that touched help. And then Frank and Derek came, man. Derek's kicked kick the boys away, and there's a bit of me like ah, that. Somebody said that's the one thing we're not meant to be doing, or something. Or... Well done, Derek. I, I've come in with your feet. Let's go. Right, listen. No, Derek! Hey! 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 He's kicking him away, not and then another one comes back and he volleys it back in. I'm like, he's not getting this. He's not getting it. <laughs>
Do you know what somebody said to me? I'm not, not never did I. Somebody said to me, they can shut the show down. I don't know if they're lying me up. If you do that, they can shut the show down. But it was what, it was like was like five time. minutes before we went out. Right, nobody, nobody throw a kick in into the crowd. But Mate, it came back. been out 20 seconds and put two balls into the crowd. I was like, Derek, come on, if I don't, don't kick balls in. And they went like, nobody walked away and came back a minute later. I'm like, hell, don't fucking speak to me like that again like that. I'm like, for fuck's sake. Like, what did it lead to though? It's fate. I mean, I'm telling you, open goal stuff, there's been loads of things that have happened that it's just pure fate, man, that that, that happened. Charlie's touch viral video. Yeah, Derek, Derek, you're in. He's in. Oh! oh! <laughs> but uh, that could be one of the best touches of our seat. Mate, the ball was pinged. Like, it's for people that can't see because it's just a video. It was pinged for at least 15 rows back, wasn't it? Right. What a ball was for the boy that fucking volleyed it for the crowd, by the way. And was that a volley? Aye. Ah, he just went out and volleyed it. So he volley. sat in his seat. So he did it. Maybe it was Lynn. Sanchez Brot on it. Lynn Kyle. Lynn Kyle was on it. Half <laughs> <laughs> volley it was. But if I'd, I'm no joking, if I had 10 seconds to think about it, I'd have caught it with my arms. But it was there before I knew it. And see when it hit my foot and bounced into my horn, I went, yes. Greatest feeling ever. Mind Derek told that story again. Who? <laughs> Derek told that, we told that story. What <laughs> story? <laughs> what was? See that 10 minutes right behind the backstage? Frank and Derek were behind me, but they were about 40 minutes early, right? <laughs> 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 They were far too early, right? And they were starting just like, ah, right, even me own, not right? <laughs> so we just started getting a bit of a laugh, right? And uh, we've said to Frank's like, I had that, I had that COVID. <laughs> oh, so he did. I had that COVID. Couldn't he get hard on? Couldn't get hard on for seven weeks. <laughs> so I'm like, to him, no way, Frank. I said, that's a... And they tell us a symptom, that's not on the government website. It's so like, I'm asking you that out there. So, Derek's obviously storing that. <laughs> He's giving me Derek's right. Frank, you remember it? Uh-huh. You've already been told. Oh, no. You've not been feeling too good. No, I had COVID. You had COVID, did you? I, I did have COVID. By the way, I'm going to be honest with you guys. This is not on the fucking government website. I never had a hard on for six weeks. <laughs> 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 Fucking don't tell me that, did you? <laughs> well, just Charlie, right, Derek, you, you, can, you can verify this horrific news we just heard backstage. This young man to my right hand side, yep, well, I he had COVID seven weeks. This is the after effects of you get COVID. You didn't what, have a hard on for seven weeks. Derek, I don't know where you've been, Mark I don't know where you've been, but he's already didn't told he us that. Hard on for seven he was weeks. bawling the boys out of the crowd. I told that in there. But you know what I do see when that finished? I remember thinking, mate, we're home and dry, man. That was fucking brilliant first half. I knew that Tommy was coming on and saying yeah. I, I actually think we've, we've done it, man. Aye. We've smashed the hydro. My head was all the other place in the break because Steph came in to do my makeup. Well, see, when we went off stage, we were all like that. Yes, that was brilliant, man. I, I can't remember you being there. No, no I, I, was I, was the I was getting my Joker makeup on. Uh, Steph said you never said a word to her, mate. Didn't 20 minutes. He, she was like trying to speak to you, mate. He, he, he just said, rattled. He just rattled. Yeah, she was going to go. But not knowing that we were going to go. See the half time bit? Oh, how quickly did that go? I think the close were all tiny, didn't he? He was enough, didn't he? We'll just do all. Like, at that point, you're itching to get back on, aren't you? Because you know what the next half's going to be. Is. See this? Is this just going to be stuck in the couch? Yeah, I hate it though. Do you want me to take it, Sam? They came back. So he left like five minutes before us because he oh, obviously had to go to the stairs. But then they said we're on in a couple of minutes. But me and Kev had to, me, Kev and Charlie all had to go and sit stage, in the stage. Right. And then you had another entrance, milking the life out of you. <laughs> and then when you came on, obviously it led to the, the Joker. So we ended up, we ended up walking, we're going to run the corridors and outside. The so we were meant to be the other side of the, the, the stage, up in the staircase. We'd obviously planned this and this is where we were going to come down for. So we're walking and walking around. So we get to this, this, like, Door with a glass window, so there's a few of the fans came back to talk and seen me there with the dress of the Joker. So I'm like shouting, Keep a selfie. I'm like, Maybe we can, because I'm not like MDC is. So the again, more people's obviously clocked it, so they're coming out of the door. So the guy's like to me, Wait there, we can't go out yet. So he's like, I'm going to phone security, so four security come. So I'm like, I wasn't thinking at this day, I still think we still need to go up to the staircase. So and he leads me out to the crowd in the bottom level. 
Nu, you son the hook yet? So I was only, uh, we weren't meant to be ever be we could, I could hear something happening. I mean, this was going on for, I swear to God, so we're just walking around, the, we're, we're doing laps to the bottom, I'm, I'm screaming at the guy, I'm like, mate, we're not meant to be here. We're meant to be up on the staircase and nobody's meant to see me in, until, Aye, until you announce it. Because you've got the Joker outfit on and all that's oh, supposed no, to be a surprise. So it's meant surprise. to be, you're meant to do your wee bit. Spotlight was going to come on you. Big spotlight, the right on. And then we're just wandering about because it was like proper, everybody was screaming. Pictures are brilliant in that. See the pictures we got sent? I love the pictures. It was like amazing, but I was just fucking raging. God. I was going to say to you, mate, see, generally I know it got you down, didn't it? It got well, you down, but I, I it was still good, wasn't it? Uh, it was the reaction to was brilliant. Right, and then Tommy, we know Tommy's coming out. But see how he was when he was backstage, were you a wee bit like... I, I'd how already... am I going, am I going to be like one? Aye, it, no, it's, it wasn't that. I'd already said before, like, I'd, I'd never met him before. It's all just based off the of stories that you've told, based, uh, based off stories that other people have told, but you, just, you still don't know what he's going to be like in that type of environment. It's a live crowd, it's a fucking, basically a gig, but he was fucking unbelievable, wasn't he? <laughs> I mean, it, his entrance, I know you, I loved yours, but no way, sister. Because see, I don't know if it's because no, cigarettes and alcohol was it? No. Oh, sorry, uh, sorry, cigarettes and alcohol. Aye. See, because we we were all there and he was yeah. in the crowd. It was like a proper concert, man. <laughs> The best was fuck Charlie going to shit his horn. Oh, he pats his horn. And Charlie goes like that and goes, oh, he's sitting back down. I'm, I've, I've so was that, what's in Charlie? Like that. I'm gone. No. I'm gone. I'm gone. I'm done or something I'm done. like that. But I'm going to say something, right? And I don't know if you believe me, when Gravison comes on and he does his hanging on that, he's walking around, and I've been backstage with him and I know, he doesn't really know what's happening here and all that, and he's, he's coming on and I'm half feeling for him a wee bit. So I'm like, ah, Come here, you. Come here, I'll give him a wee handshake to start. He just blanks me. So, reaction so for me, try to help him. My confidence goes for there to there. I'm like, oh, not. And he sees it, doesn't he? What and then a shit that is. Himself, see when he sits next to you. Wasn't he nervous at all, was he? No, but he's, and see, he's after, like that, man. see, after an hour, I tell me that he never played poker, he didn't play Call of Duty. He told every story about <laughs> poker and <laughs> Call of Duty under the just sun like for the next hour, yeah. didn't he? <laughs> Kevin like, built up about 20 minutes and finally asked my question. I asked someone and he just went, Boring Kevin. <laughs> Boring Kevin. <laughs> Fucking hell, man. What about players you played against in the Premiership? Vieira, Keane. <laughs> <laughs> Boring! And then did you ask him a question? Then I asked him a question, like, one at a time, lad. <laughs> Off the pitch, he told his bikes, he was his best quality off the pitch. No, but we can own one story at a time, Charlie, relax. <laughs> <laughs> so then he went again, confidence went again, and then he said, um, What's your name again, lad? And I just went again. And then On I'm, stage, he said that. To me? Did he? Can't remember that. What's your name again, lad? Like that. And I'm like, that. <laughs> Oh, mate. Like he's like, he's as tall as. What's your name? <laughs> <laughs> At one point, he got everybody, so he got Kev with that. Talk. I asked him something, he went, turned around to you and went like, who the fuck is this kid? I'm like, oh, no.
and then Boogie at the end. That was it. We won the show the day, Boogie, but... Two words in my mouth. I think we need to do that all the time now. Do you? That, that was brilliant at the end, didn't it? See, because you knew you'd done well, and it was just, enjoy this fucking two minutes. Because the Boogie song was the build-up to the Hydro as well as the Euros won it, and it was just... But we didn't, we weren't sure if everyone was bored that knew the Euros was finished, they were going to move on, you hear it all the time, but the reaction to it was fucking... Most of the videos after it was all about the boogie song. See, like generally that. though, right, we're talking about so many good uh, moments. See, when the show was done and you were on the stage and uh, the full crowd was just singing I Can Boogie. When the boogie came on to Hydro, it was just the perfect song for the perfect moment at that time, mm -hmm. and it was fucking epic. It's emotional, isn't it? You're back, it is emotional, yeah. brilliant. I, I, it was pro it was easily one of the best nights, probably the best night of my life, I'd say. Aye, hands down up there, right? Most hands enjoyable down. on here. Right, see when the boogie came on and I knew we'd smashed it and that's what, I, I kind of got up on the couch and I was looking at all you and how happy you were man because I kind of remember where your life was at when you first came on I remembered where Kev was at Kev probably wasn't in a great place either I think he didn't that and just seeing how happy we all were and just knowing that you'd never done a podcast before you'd never done a live show when we first started doing this you've just smashed the hydro looking on your face how happy you were Kev the same Charlie even mate because even like Thinking of Charlie when the first time I mentioned Charlie McGrew, no, 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 Charlie. No, he can't interview Charlie, that'd be terrible. And now he's sitting with his preds at the Hydro. So it's just, it was pure proud of everyone, mate. We've all done this, man. We all didn't have a clue what we were doing at the start. And then I see Tommy Gravison, who probably was the reason that we all started it. The reason that you started thinking about why can we do these, what, what makes these interviews good, it's stories about guys like Tommy Gravison. He's there with us. What is Tommy Gravison doing standing with Cy Ferry, Paul Slane, Kev Kyle, and Andy? at the high drum, so yeah, it's such a surreal moment and as I said, it's probably the best night in my life. Right?